Game Back Cave, the top 100 board game geek games of all time. We're breaking them down every week, uh, pretty much regularly now. Um, there's a little caveat here on Resistance is the game of this week, and this week it's number 96 on uh, the Board Game Geek. But you may have noticed that Marvel Legendary was number 96 when we reviewed it. So things are constantly in flux. Flux is not on the list. And uh, we're just going to rate them as we see them. And so uh, that list could change. So there's probably be an update here at the bottom of the screen by the time this actually goes to print. <laughs> all right. So we're going to, well, first of all, I'm Chris. David. And I'm the OGG, Mike, back again with you all today. And before we get started, I have to quickly say the uh, Board Game Batcave legal department is making me say this. So, <laughs> depending on where you live and when you watch this video, I cannot vouch for this. McRib may or may not be back where you are <laughs> when you're watching this. So, legally, we have to get that out of the way. So, now you can go back to enjoying the countdown or the review, sorry. Uh, starting with Chris over here talking about resistance. And the lawyers are, are very happy about that. It's like 5 o'clock somewhere, you know. It's That's a McRib right. somewhere. That's true. So, That's true. somewhere around the world. Yeah. All right, if you're we're not gonna... a Cardinals fan, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to review uh, resistance. And this is the uh, standard edition, not the Avalon edition. In the traditional four categories of components, replayability, gameplay, and theme. And uh, I think I'm going to start this week with components. It's a, it's a card game, what are you going to say? It does have a few little extra chits, cards, whatever you want to call them, to, like, uh, to show markers. markers, to show who's like the on the team for that mission. Uh, got a little couple of cardboard um, mini cards that show, you know, how many missions you have to complete to win. That's really just, really just cards, too. Um, the artwork, meh, I can take it or leave it. Um, Matter of fact, Resistance, Resistance Avalon, and now I think there's like 40 different versions of Resistance that have tacked on because of its success. Um, I could take it or leave it as far as the art goes. Uh, probably it could be better in my opinion, but uh, the card stock's fine. You know, I, I usually say if it's a card game and there's nothing else really to it, I just give it a seven and then go from artwork for there, from there or if there's something really bad, I'll go down. Um, but it's kind of like, it, it, I'm going to go actually go an eight because I think the way it's set up in the box and everything, it's pleasing. It's not unpleasing. So I'm going to give it a good, nice eight for my components. All right. I don't blame you there. Um, yeah, again, this is a card game. It's a pretty simple game. There's not much needed. Um, they give you everything that you're going to, need to play it and uh, keep up with what's happening there uh, the, yeah the quality of it is fine the style is also not really my cup of tea but it's it's not terrible but it's just not really my favorite style out there or anything so it's uh, it's kind of hard uh, with this type of game to really uh, come down real hard on the components because there's just not a whole lot there but what there is in my opinion is is uh, done pretty well and uh, it's good quality uh, could be a little bit better but you know not too bad so I'm gonna come in at a smooth seven uh, just as an overall uh, that's that's where I was thinking between seven seven and a half uh, you're really getting what you pay for it's uh, the components are simple you can pretty much play it anywhere uh, it's easy to put in a backpack and just pull out and you can play at a cafeteria table dorm table it don't matter uh, so it's not hard to keep up with everything fits in this nice little box uh, artwork is like Chris said eh. I mean it's okay uh, it it does its purpose I'll put it that way it does its purpose uh, so just keep it short and sweet uh, seven and a half I'll go there but you know like a, like a card game that kind of I don't know if it sprung from it, if it's not the same universe or whatever, but that Coup card game. Uh -huh. Yeah. Coup used to be, yeah, I think I've got it over there. It's over there in the corner. There you go. Um, an old version of Coup, 
really no artwork at all or whatever, but the, the newer versions of it, I really kind of like the artwork. And so I haven't seen the latest version of Resistance, but maybe there's a version out there now that would be better and more along the lines of the coup since it's the same uh, universe and uh, spruce up those numbers a little bit. <laughs> but as far as that goes, uh, components is pretty cut and dried. And so next would be theme. theme is they they really took a card game and then ran with the theme I mean you're supposed to infer a lot with the resistance like you have this whole backstory about you know the futuristic society where you're a member of the resistance or you're not and then you have a world that fits other games into it like coup and then uh, I don't even know they got so many resistance games out now so I think that's just I'm not drawn into the theme like I could be if they painted something else onto it. Um, but it's not bad. And so the theme is, I don't know, it, I think it needs more of like a, I know both sides, you don't want to portray one side as more evil or whatever than the other, but uh, they need like a Nazi type dictator <laughs> side and then a good side to me to make you more want to fight against it. More... Uh, more defined? More like I can feel for my side rather than, uh, well, I'm blue. Blue's good, right? <laughs> uh, so the theme is going to just roll in at seven and a half for me, too. It's I could take it or leave it. Or I could add something else. It's a, we're not talking about what I like about it yet, though, right. which doesn't involve the theme. <laughs> <laughs> so seven and a half is what you uh, yeah. finally came in at. Yeah, um, I think the theme on here is is uh, maybe just a little bit better than that. Uh, but it's tough for me to think of something else that they could have, you know, this, this is really a game about saboteurs and uh, spies and, um, you know, double identities and things like that. You're trying to uh, throw people off the trail or uh, you're trying to throw out misinformation where you can, things like that. So for me, I... I I felt like Resistance or Spies or something was about the only avenue they had for a theme, and I think it works pretty well, and I think they um, they went pretty deep with it. So I, I'm, I'm actually pretty satisfied with it. Um, so uh, for those reasons, I'm going to give it an 8 on theme. Everything that he said, but one of those things that appealed to me on this game as far as theme goes... I love games that deal with bullcrap. <laughs> I censored that, by the way. <laughs> oh, I can do that afterwards. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love being able nice to guy. sit in bullcrap with each other and and lie. I, I love those type games where it's a lot of misdirection. Uh, anytime I can play something like that, that's it's more fun and just okay. I'm moving this chit and okay, I got this. You you can get more into it, and if you got a good group of friends that that are really good with it, you know, especially like these guys who are always talking crap. Uh, <laughs> Is that a compliment? Or a... Yes, I, I, that is a compliment. That is a compliment. Uh, when you got friends like that, it just makes it more appealing and where I want to play. Otherwise, if you got just a few friends. The theme is like, okay, well, it just does it, but it doesn't roll the way it should roll to me. So, But I'll give the theme an eight in that with the right people. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we go into gameplay. Uh, this is where this game for me shines is... Uh, that's why I bought it, and it's why I continue to pull it out at any party. Uh, it says five to ten players, and uh, it seems to be the right... I'd say every time I've played it, it's been closer to ten than five, but um, it's usually because you're playing it at some kind of family dinner or Thanksgiving or, you know, when all the family gets together, and everybody, at least in my family, likes to lie to each other. So <laughs> we uh, we pull it out. Happy holidays. <laughs> 
So this is a very popular game, even though it's been out a while, and uh, the gameplay is spectacular because it takes that betrayer and it it doubles down, and sometimes triples down, because there's two to three betrayers, basically, and you're having to root out. And uh, I just can't say enough other than I can give it a nine and a half for its gameplay because they took a simple card game and they made it into much more, regardless of it just being cards. It's kind of like Werewolf, but mm -hmm. I actually like this yeah. better than Werewolf, the way they uh, do the missions and the stuff in there can be more than, you know, depending on the size of the group. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, nine and a half. Is that yes. what I heard? Nine and a half. Just have to keep confirming. But uh, <laughs> yeah, gameplay, uh, again, this is where the game takes off. This is why it's still clinging to that top 100 list. Hopefully it'll still be on there by the time this goes to air. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good game, been around a long time. As we've mentioned, it spawned all kinds of of uh, expansions and add-ons and things like that so clearly they, they struck you know they hit on something good there with the gameplay as far as it allows you to really get into your character and have uh, you know have a good time with it try to spin as much nonsense as you can try to just have people guessing through the whole thing but at the same time you're trying to get that little bit of information out of them if you can um, to me, it's it's a blast. It's a good time when you finally get to start messing with other people's heads, you know, and trying to, to uh, get information and give nothing up all at the same time. So uh, I think it's a good uh, mechanic and that plays out really well. But as uh, the Batman down here mentioned, the group you're playing with has a huge uh, variation on that, you know, has a big impact on that. And I think you can say that about a lot of games, but, you know, this is a, um, a storytelling game in a sense, you know, so you need some people out there that are going to go with it and uh, not be reserved and everything. So as long as you've got a good group like that, everybody knows what they're getting into, everybody wants to go along with the spirit of it, I think it's a lot of fun, and for that reason I give it an 8.5. I can see this becoming a... If you play it right and you get the right people, it'd make a great drinking game. Huh. Uh, How many times have we said that on this channel? <laughs> <laughs> it, it would. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a borderline alcoholic or anything. Uh, no one ever does. <laughs> First step is admitting you have a problem. <laughs> I don't have a problem. <laughs> With the right people, the game is great. It's not something that I'd sit down and play with you know, my soccer team I got at the house. Uh, it's it's really good with a certain clientele as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I wouldn't sit and just play this with my kids so much. Uh, but most of mine are young. So yeah, my seven year old likes it a lot. She uh, likes lying. <laughs> <laughs> well this would be something I like playing with the guys per se. Uh Different games that I play at home, uh, like we talked about, like Love Letters. My kids love it. They love playing that to death, and it's a simple card game. This could work good, like like uh, he's talking about with a family, like with my mom and dad and my wife and stuff like that. That would be pretty cool, have a couple of friends over. But it has to be about the storytelling. If you can't get into the storytelling, it's just not going to work for me. Uh, so I'm not going to go super high. I'll, to me, it's going to be based on who you're playing with. So I would have it put to the side until somebody I knew would be good with that game. So I'm going to give it an 8. All right. That's pretty strong. And that leaves replayability. For me, this game is highly replayable, and I've replayed it a lot. I, of course, I only can play it in groups of five to ten, so it only comes out at uh, parties or get-togethers with the family. But it tends to come out almost every year, a couple of times a year at my family's get-togethers because everybody likes this game. All my family, once they were introduced to it, they want to see if they can get it one over on the family again this year. So it, it's almost competitive at this point. 
and uh, so for me it's highly replayable it's portable it's the only ding to it is that you can't play it with two to three people or you know even four people or it's, and it's not a it's almost a game you have to be in the mood for like in a crowd mm-hmm. setting you can't just say oh we don't play that let's lie to each other tonight <laughs> so um bluffing games tend to be that way but I, i'm still going to give it a, a nine for replayability because i think that's one of its strengths is that even though it's the same thing you're doing every time the betrayers are different every time and the lies you have to come up with uh tend to people start reading you after a while and so you have to come up with new lies or new ways to tell a lie and so uh you got those twitches yeah it, your tails come out <laughs> and so uh i'm gonna give it a nine for replayability at least in my family it is and that's what i got to go on so a nine. Nine for you on replayability. Excellent. Yeah, this is a, this game you could play over and over, and it doesn't lose its, um, you know, the shine doesn't come off the apple right away. This one's, this is a good game because you're going to have to try to come up with a new line of BS each time. you got to come up with a new way to throw people off your scent, or you're trying to find a new way to crack somebody, um, you know. Maybe you have picked up on somebody's tail, and now you're just going to stand there and interrogate them <laughs> and let them know that you know, but at the, you know, but you're not telling the whole table you know, but they know that you know what you know, <laughs> you know. So anyway, yeah, this this game's a lot of fun. This uh, you can play it over and over, and no one's going to just uh, you know lock down one strategy that they use over and over again. Uh, you know, uh, um, there are games where I can tell you the first. The, you know the opponent's first move before they make it this game is different it's going to be new every time because it changes up the dynamics of it change up and everything so you know this game's the genius is in the simplicity and uh, I think it's a really well done game that I've had fun with each time I've played it so all those reasons add up to me as a strong nine nine point0 for replayability I guess I'm just a low ball guy here. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm, you set the curve. I'm just gonna be honest about it. Uh, I don't mind playing it. You know, like we have our guy nights and stuff like this, and it comes out. Hey, that's cool. I don't mind playing it. I don't have any reservations about it. Uh, uh, the replayability on it is is cool, very cool. But it like as I spoke before, it has to be with a certain group, or I just don't want to play it. Uh, I guess in that sense there, I have to go an eight on replayability. Uh. So there you have it. Uh, You heard our views on the gameplay theme, replayability, and components. And so if you agree with us, then you you can go with this score right here. We'll put the uh, Board Game Geek score over here, mm-hmm. the score we gave it right here, and then the rank that it's currently at, which it may or may not be 96 <laughs> for this week uh, there. And uh, stick around in the credits, and you can see how we've rated all the ones we've rated so far and how we compare to the BGG's Top 100. Until then, we'll see you next time at the Batcave. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys. <laughs>